Thank you to my patrons. Your generosity and commitment to my work is astonishing. I sincerely appreciate it. And for me, that is the most rewarding aspect of homeopathy. And that's really why I keep going, because I find it very fulfilling that I can help people without the side effects of the conventional medicine. <laughs> yeah, there's no side effects because the homeopathic remedies are water. Of course there's no side effects. There's nothing in it. Take the risk of thinking for yourself. Much more happiness, truth, beauty, and wisdom will come to you that way. Thank you. Hey everybody, Magic Skeptic here, and don't worry, the video is about to begin. I just wanted to make you aware of my Patreon. So guys, for as little as £3 per month, or as much as £50 per month, you can support my mission here on my channel, The Magic Skeptic. And so, if you want to gain access to all sorts of bonuses and extras, including things like downloadable episodes of my podcast that are ad-free and audio only that you can listen to on the go or perhaps you want to have a question answered in a monthly video or you know better still maybe you want to sit down and have an actual skype call with yours truly magic skeptic if all of that sounds good well it's all available in my patreon as i said for as little as three pounds per month or as much as 50 you can gain access to a plethora of bonuses and extras and so if that sounds good you can check out the link to my patreon in the description below i hope to see you there hey everybody magic skeptic here and you're all most welcome to another episode of a magician's thoughts in this episode and next week's episode for that matter i'm going to explore the evidentially bankrupt practice of homeopathy the idea that we can cure illnesses, diseases, and chronic conditions using nothing other than water. So if you enjoy this episode, make sure you tune in next week for part two, or, you know, if indeed you're watching this in the future, well, just watch both parts right away. Either way, we're going to dive right into it, and I want to begin by telling you a little story. I'm very sad to say that every now and then I lose some more faith in humanity as if that were possible. <laughs> what am I referring to and why the hell am I laughing about it? Well, I guess to answer the second question, I'm laughing because if I don't laugh about what I'm about to tell you, I think the only other option would be to honestly cry. I was speaking with a person the other day who shall remain nameless. You'll have to forgive the ambiguity here because I think this person may watch this video and I don't want it to be so transparent and obvious that I'm referring to them, albeit when I go into the details here. If they're paying attention at all, they'll probably figure out that this is about them. But at the very least, I want to anonymize them so that the manner in which I speak about them isn't obvious to others right? I, I don't want it to be obvious to other people watching who could perhaps trace the line between what I'm saying to that person, because a lot of people who I know watch my content, a lot of people in my immediate life watch my videos because they're supportive. But anyway, with that addressed, forgive the ambiguity with the following story, but I was speaking with a person <laughs> that I know, <laughs> I was speaking with a person the other day, and the conversation, the ever topical conversation of pandemics and viruses and COVID and all that came up, right? And we got talking about vaccines. I obviously support the vaccine. I think the evidence is very, very strong. I am a skeptic. I try to follow the evidence where it leads. I've been vaccinated three times at this point. And so I would enthusiastically, in fact, get vaccinated a fourth time, to be quite honest. Uh, any extra bit of uh, protection for me uh, as an asthmatic, you know, is really, really important, I think. But look... In the midst of this conversation, we got talking about medicine. We got talking about whether or not vaccines and medicines are good, whether or not they're just for profit and all the rest of it. And I think you can see where I'm going here. This person I know said some things that were quite frankly and truly medieval, right? They said that what works for me might not work for somebody else. 
that it's down to personal preference. And, you know, this person has a partner who they say every time they get sick or they get a flu, they make up a herbal remedy at home and it it fixes them. It makes them feel a million percent better and so on and so forth. And I was just examining their words and I said, well, with the greatest respect, it's not down to personal opinion. It's not down to what works for you may not work for me. We're not talking about our favorite color here. We're not talking about mere preference. We're talking about biology. We're talking about science. We're talking about efficacy. And yes, the placebo effect can make something that is literally ineffective be effective because of psychology. But there are even limits to that. And so I examined this. I challenged this person on their claims. And I said, so are you telling me that the unbelievable advances that we've made in, for example, treating HIV, that the only reason that works is because people's opinion is that it works, or that the only reason that works is because the person taking the medicine feels that it's the right thing for them to do? Or is it perhaps that there's actually some science going on here, that there's an objective fact of the matter, that there are active ingredients in these antiviral medications? Right? I mean, am I saying something too controversial here? And then they responded and said this, which proved to me that I was talking with an unreasonable person, and which is where I lost a little bit of faith in humanity. They said that, oh, well, that's different. That's much more serious, which is a textbook moving of the goalposts, right? So their initial claim was things work because we believe in them and because uh, we think it's best for us. And so I counter with an example where the medicine is obviously the thing that's working and it has absolutely nothing to do with one's own psychology or opinion of the fact and then they respond and say oh but that's a much more serious example well what are you talking about then right and guys it really got me thinking this conversation this little back and forth with this person who again shall remain nameless it got me thinking about how it just seems to me, at an anecdotal level at least, I bump into people like this all the time. People who just lack even the barest form of sceptical thought. People who have just taken the bait, hook, line and sinker, right? These people who are convinced that medicine is all, you know, just a bit of a preferential playground where we can choose what's best for us. Choose what's best for me and what works for me right? And so I started thinking about this, and I thought that this deserves a video of its own. Because you might be thinking, I mean, look, maybe you're thinking right now after I told you that story, magic skeptic, that's not that serious. I mean, if they want to try some herbal remedies at home and it makes them feel better, then what harm? And you know, that's a fair point. That's a fair criticism. It's a fair response. But that's only fair so long as that person is willing to acknowledge that the herbal remedies must be tried alongside the officially approved and sanctioned and tested and proven medicines. I always remember the comedian Dara O'Brien. He's an Irish comedian, so if you're not familiar with him, don't worry. I'll pop a picture of his on the screen. But he had a great bit in one of his stand-ups one time where he said about natural remedies and medicines and so on. He said, yes, we tested it all and the stuff that worked became medicine the rest of it is just a salad right <laughs> so these people who think that they're they've kind of discovered some incredible remedy or cure at home you know mixing up a bunch of herbs and spices and drinking it in a hot cup or something like that they're just deluded it's just madness right if there is anything effective going on there then you've probably accidentally taken some garlic in there's probably some garlic in there which does have in fact some medicinal properties fair enough but it's not like scientists are oblivious to that fact the stuff that works has been isolated and it has been condensed and turned into medicine right the rest of it again is just a bowl of potpourri or a bowl of salad it's not relevant now again the placebo effect i.e your belief in something working can actually have a positive psychological impact but yeah that might work for some low level stuff if you've got a mild ache in your head and somebody hands you a sugar pill and there have been studies done in this stuff if you've got a mild ache in your head and somebody hands you a sugar pill and says this is the cure and you believe them because they're wearing the 
the the doctor's jacket and you know they sound authoritative and so on when you take that sugar pill your headache might in fact go away mind over matter right i'm not dismissing mind over matter please don't misunderstand dear listener i'm all about pma positive positive mental attitude i think it's an incredibly important thing and i think positive mental attitude is absolutely intrinsic to one's overall bodily health, be it psychological or physical, right? So I'm not dismissing that at all. But don't sit there and tell me that positive mental attitude or one's belief in a cure is going to be enough to sort out somebody's cancer. Don't sit there and tell me that positive mental attitude is a substitute for chemotherapy. Don't sit there and tell me that a positive mental attitude is a substitute for any other chronic illness, back injury, kidney problems, lung problems. Positive mental attitude isn't going to cure my asthma, which I alluded to in the opening of the conversation. And yet, there are so many people in this world who, rather than go to the hospital, go to their naturopathic doctor or go to their homeopathic remedy expert. And that really is the center of the bullseye for me, guys, because that to me is an intolerable state of affairs. So guys, before we go any further, I think it's very important that we clarify so that we're all on the same page. It's very important that we clarify what homeopathy is. Homeopathy is the idea that like cures like. What they do is take a very, very small amount of the actual contaminant itself, the thing that's making you sick, and they add it to a solution of water and then give you the water. It's added in such a diluted amount that it's essentially non-existent in the water solution itself. And therein lies the mystery and the ridiculousness of the whole thing. With all that in mind, and in the hope of, or with the hope rather, of perhaps enlightening some people who might have been, you know, bamboozled by this industry, this natural remedy industry that has grown up, a multi, multi million dollar or pound industry. My hope with this video was that I shed some light on it and maybe change some minds. Perhaps you, dear listener, already agree with me on this. And if that's the case, I hope you'll join me on this journey so that you can just bolster and strengthen your own arguments in this domain. But if you are clutching on, even by a thread, in terms of believing in homeopathy and similar natural remedies, well then, I'm hoping to change your mind here. I'm hoping to to burst that bubble. Not because I want to be a killjoy or take from you something that you hold dear, but because I care about your well-being. I want people to get the medicine that works when they're ill. I don't want them to go and get a solution of water and continue to be sick. So in order to deal with this topic guys i've sought out a youtube channel that deals with homeopathy specifically and i've got two short videos of theirs very very short they're only like three minutes each i won't show you the entirety of each video i'm just going to show you some highlights and i want to respond to them because you can see the root fallacies throughout you can see the ridiculousness from the ground up and after we've gone through those stick around for later in the video because i want to share with you some truly tragic stories of where this kind of nonsense leads so if you're sat there thinking like i said earlier oh magic skeptic what's the big deal if somebody wants to try out some natural remedies well i'll show you the consequences and the consequences are dire indeed these videos come from a channel called faculty of homeopathy and so i'm just going to dive right in with the first video and you guys can be the judge I'm a doctor, medical doctor, and an eye surgeon, and I grew up in Germany. Yes, I have to interject already. One thing you'll notice should you visit the channel, which I will include in the description below, I might add, although please take with a pinch of salt everything you see there, but one thing you will notice is that many of their videos open with the credentials of the speaker. Now, while they're not saying that this speaker is right because she is a medical doctor, I don't think it's an accident that they open each and every video with the credentials. They're trying to impress upon you the authority and the expertise of the speaker. They're trying to suggest that we should take what she's saying seriously because she is a doctor, or at least that is my impression. But remember, guys, to appeal to the special letters that appear before somebody's name in an argument is just an argument from authority. 
It is to suggest that this person is right precisely because they are an authority. But that is a fallacy. Smart people and people with expertise can believe very silly things. What matters is the evidence, not one's position of authority. So with that acknowledged, please, as we proceed with the video, do not take the expertise or the doctor title seriously here. I want you to examine what she's saying. Ask yourself, is she bringing any evidence to the table? Not what position of, of authority she occupies. So right, with that acknowledged, let's continue. When I was a medical student in about my 20s, I developed very severe eczema and I, I had it particularly on my arms, in my face, on my neck. and so severely that it was oozing, bleeding, I couldn't move my neck, it was itching heavily at night um, and I could hardly sleep and I was given the normal treatments, the normal conventional treatments of steroid creams and it didn't really help and then the steroid creams got stronger and stronger and I had it for a whole year and it just didn't really resolve and I found a homeopathic doctor in my university town and I went to him and he gave me a remedy and I must admit it didn't really make much difference. Shocker. I must admit it didn't really make much difference and I went back and he gave me a second remedy and again I couldn't really feel much. And I was sort of giving up hope a little but went back again and it was the third or the fourth remedy and I took it and I could feel that same evening that the skin was less itchy, um, there was less aggravation and within a few days I felt much, much better and within a week, one and a half weeks, my eczema was almost completely gone and it never came back. I trust and assume, dear listener, that you can identify the ridiculousness of what's going on here. So this woman, who was suffering very badly from eczema, went to a homeopathic doctor. Homeopathic doctor. Jesus Christ, it makes me sick to even say that phrase. Doctor. Christ above. In any case, they went to this quack who gave her a homeopathic remedy, and shockingly enough, it didn't work. Went back again, gave her a second one, and shockingly enough, it didn't work. And then she says it was maybe the third or fourth time. So let's just go ahead and assume that that's true. So she went back a third time, got another homeopathic remedy. Again, shocker, it didn't work. Goes back a fourth time and then her eczema starts to heal up. And I'm supposed to take seriously that the eczema was cured by the homeopathic remedy. If you are convinced by this, dear listener, take a look at the following. I'll pop this on the screen. There is an article that I searched up specifically for this um, video. The title of the article is, Will Eczema Go Away on Its Own? This comes from the Rheumatology and Allergy Institute of Connecticut. And they say the following. Eczema typically develops in early childhood and in a small number of cases spontaneously resolves on its own. For everyone else, eczema is usually a lifelong skin condition. While scientists have yet to find a cure, there are treatments and ways to manage your eczema to minimize flare-ups. So I'm just going to read that first sentence again. Typically develops in early childhood and in a small number of cases spontaneously resolves on its own. I rest my case. So this woman's eczema goes away after four attempts. And I'm supposed to buy that the homeopathic remedy was the cure here? Given how willing she was to keep going back, I suspect she'd be telling the exact same story if she had had 10 homeopathic remedies and the 11th so-called cured her. I suspect if she had had 20 homeopathic remedies and the 21st cured her, that she would be telling the same story. How is this not fallacious? How is this not absolutely asinine and ridiculous? She was just going to keep trying homeopathic remedies until her eczema went away. And if it had never went away, she wouldn't be telling this story at all. And so homeopathy wouldn't have been revealed to be the ridiculous thing that it is. But clearly, or at least my 
guess here is that she's one of the lucky few whose eczema spontaneously resolved on its own, and it just happened to coincide with a homeopathic remedy. Now, she doesn't give a time frame here, but if she was trying these four homeopathic remedies over a period of months, maybe even years, well, then there was a lot of time for it to spontaneously resolve on its own, right? How is this indistinguishable at the level of principle from me praying for rain? I prayed the first time. No rain. So a week later, I pray again. No rain. And then I take a break. And a month later, I pray again for rain. Nothing. But the fourth time I pray for rain, it rains. Oh my God, God is real and he answered my prayer. I mean, are you kidding me? I got so excited there, I almost knocked down my background. <laughs> but are you kidding me? This is nonsense. This is such a joke. If you're going to keep trying and trying and trying, eventually a coincidence is going to occur. You're making it happen. You're making it happen. If I keep praying, eventually one of those prayers is going to coalesce with reality. If I keep trying different homeopathic remedies, eventually one of those is going to coalesce with the coincidental recovery of your illness. Right? How many other people took homeopathic remedies for eczema and it didn't work out and so they didn't record a video? You see, there is a kind of confirmation bias that goes on here. Only the successful stories are the ones that are told. Only the people whose eczema went away are going to record the video or tell the tale or pass on the narrative. The ones that failed because it's a failure, nobody wants to hear that story, they're not going to get propagated. Everybody wants to hear the miracle story. Nobody wants to hear the conventional, boring falsification narrative, which demonstrates that homeopathy is bullshit. People want to hear the success story. So this woman's eczema went away, and I'm very happy for her. But the idea that the homeopathic remedy is responsible is just a nonsense. Now, you might say to me, dear listener, but Magic Skeptic, you don't know that it didn't work, and that's a fair reply. But if I don't know that it didn't work and she doesn't know that it did, well then the only fair position to adopt here is agnosticism. Either way, you cannot conclude that the homeopathic remedy was the thing that was successful here. More study would be required. You would have to do an extensive scientific study where you tried the homeopathic remedy versus a nullified alternative and do a double blind trial so nobody knows which one they're taking and then see whose eczema goes away and whose doesn't and whether or not there's any change in any patient at all. But unless you're willing to do that, this is just cheap babble. It's just talk. It's positively medieval. This is how they discovered cures in the medieval period. Cures, inverted commas. Right? So in the medieval period, they used to use something called trepanning which if you haven't heard of, was the drilling of a hole into your bloody head where they would drain out blood because they thought one of the reasons you were sick is that you've got too much blood. Now, you might ask yourself, how the hell did they come up with this? Well, because obviously at one point, somebody was suffering from an illness, they drilled a hole in their head, removed some blood, and the illness went away. But that doesn't mean that the two are connected. That's a correlation. What you must demonstrate is causation. The fact that this woman took four homeopathic remedies over an undisclosed amount of time and her eczema went away is not at all proof that the homeopathic remedy is effective. In fact, her admission that it was the fourth remedy that worked seems to point powerfully, in my view at least, in the direction that she was just chasing a result here and that there was just a coincidental correlation at the end. I see no reason here at all to accept or to believe that a causal connection exists between the homeopathic remedy and what actually happened to this woman. Just my two cents, guys, but let's continue. I started training at the um, Tunbridge Wells Homeopathic Hospital and then I learned more and more about homeopathy and I started treating other family members and then patients um, for my clinics and I learned also about chronic diseases and I incorporated that more and then um, started a, a private practice in homeopathy and have seen uh, great successes both with acute disease as well as with chronic disease and I find it most rewarding 
um, when somebody comes who has, for example, chronic fatigue, had to give up his work, can't do much, just sits at home, and after about three months of treatment, the person has their energy back, they can go back to work, and they feel full of life again. This is where the video takes a very dark turn, and I'm not so sure what to say in terms of analysis here. But if you Google chronic fatigue syndrome, what you'll find is a very unfortunate and sad picture because there's no known cure for chronic fatigue syndrome. And yet the woman in this video is claiming that she has had chronic fatigue syndrome sufferers who have been cured by her homeopathic remedies. This, my dear listener, is a very suspicious claim. I'm really not so sure what to say here because there is no known cure. So what she's saying is she has discovered a cure for something that scientists have missed. Now, while that's a possibility, surely if this was demonstrating considerable efficacy the scientific community would investigate this and discover it to be so and then deploy it as a remedy deploy it as a cure why hasn't this woman won a nobel prize in medical science why isn't she the face of the cure for chronic fatigue i'll tell you why guys because she's full of shit I'm sorry to say I don't have a more educated comment to make here, but I view this claim in the same guise as if she said her homeopathic remedies can cure cancer. Well, I'm sorry, there's no cure for cancer that has been discovered. And if homeopathic remedies were the cure, then cancer wouldn't be a problem anymore. And yet it persists. And so too does chronic fatigue syndrome. So when she says that people's chronic fatigue syndrome has gone away, let me extend an olive branch here. Maybe she's being 100% honest, but if you read about chronic fatigue syndrome, you'll see that those who suffer from it go through periods of remission, and then it comes back, and then they go into remission again, and then it comes back, and it kind of vacillates back and forth. And so the best possible interpretation I can offer of her comments here is that while giving a homeopathic remedy to patients maybe they went into a period of remission which she then misidentified as oh you're cured and sent them packing on their way and didn't see the follow-up where months later their chronic fatigue comes back with a vengeance so that's the best possible interpretation of the comments that are being made here that i can offer but i'm not convinced at all by her claim that she has cured chronic fatigue syndrome and if indeed she has well, then she should be the face of that cure. Chronic fatigue shouldn't be a problem anymore, and yet it persists. And that's where we get into real conspiratorial talk. And going back to the opening of this video where I mentioned that person with whom I spoke about natural remedies, that's exactly where they pivoted to in the conversation when I pressed them. They started making all sorts of conspiratorial claims, where again, I lost even more faith in humanity. This person said, oh, well, uh, the official cures sanctioned by scientists are just for profit, and there might actually be a cure for cancer, but it's been hidden because there's more money to be made in treating it. These kinds of claims of clandestine agendas and conspiracies and, you know, cures actually exist, but there's more money to be made in treating certain diseases. These claims don't stand up to any level of scrutiny at all because all of the incentives run in the opposite direction. If this woman actually has a cure for chronic fatigue, she would win the Nobel Prize for medical science. If a scientist out there has the cure for cancer, if you're suggesting that they could be bought off by the people who treat cancer and make money out of that, again, the incentives just aren't there. Because if you discover the cure for cancer, by publishing that and making that world news, you would get all the money you could have ever possibly wanted anyway. You'd get all of the research grants. You'd become the Einstein of your time. You'd win the Nobel Prize and your name would go down in the history books for all time. So this allegation that there's a conspiracy afoot by the scientific community to 
put down homeopathic remedies for chronic fatigue or to obscure cures for cancer because of some financial incentive these claims do not hold water <laughs> if you'll forgive the pun <laughs> they do not uh, stand up to scrutiny a moment's skeptical reflection on these kinds of claims reveals them to be the utterly nonsensical evidentially bankrupt ideas that they are so with the greatest of respect dear listener no i don't think this woman has found a cure for chronic fatigue and i don't think that if she did find one that it would be hidden and suppressed by the mech by the machiavellian evil members of the scientific community on the contrary she would be celebrated as a person who had discovered a, a great cure and so yeah i hope that does something for your understanding of this i hope this analysis does something to dissuade you if indeed you were convinced by any of this hogwash and yeah let's continue after about three months of treatment the person has their energy back they can go back to work and they feel full of life again and these are often patients who have go gone through many conventional investigations um, and had many medications given to them and they weren't getting better sometimes just getting worse and then with the homeopathy they got their energy back they're sleeping better they had like a new lease of life and for me that is the most rewarding aspect of homeopathy and that's really why I keep going because I find it very fulfilling that I can help people without the side effects of the conventional medicine <laughs> yeah there's no side effects because the homeopathic remedies are water of course there's no side effects there's nothing in it there's fuck all in it how could there be any side effects this attack of conventional medicine oh they tried all the conventional medicines and they didn't work yeah because you're treating chronic fatigue syndrome there's no cure of course there's no you know patient who comes to you from having had the conventional medicines who has had success because there is no cure for chronic fatigue and your assertion that your homeopathic remedy is successful is just that an assertion you haven't provided any evidence. Show me the peer-reviewed scientific research that demonstrates that your homeopathic remedies are successful. Don't sit there on your high horse and criticize the conventional medicines for having side effects and for not working when you're talking about a disease for which there is no fucking cure. That's ridiculous. And don't sit there on your high horse and assert that you've found the holy grail when you have no peer-reviewed scientific evidence for your claims. I mean, I'm sorry, but you're a joke. This is absolutely asinine. This is ridiculous. I just, I can't believe it. And then there's people out there who take people like this seriously. I don't know what to say, guys. Let's move on. I can even treat people who are unsuitable to take conventional medicine, like pregnant ladies babies and i find it works really really well in all of those cases yes you can treat those people because again there's nothing in your thimble of water except for water newsflash water is not harmful for a pregnant woman Re I, I mean words are failing me here newsflash water has no side effects shockingly enough there are no nutritional uh, or dangers or side effects associated with water consumption <laughs> again this attack of conventional medicine yes there are medicines that pregnant women must avoid precisely because those medicines have active ingredients that are dangerous for a fetus water is not dangerous for a fetus it just quenches your thirst Oh, anyway, 
That's video number one, guys. So what do you think of my criticisms? Do you agree with me that homeopathy is just evidentially bankrupt garbage? If so, jump into the comments below and sound off and let me know that you're supporting my work and that you agree with me on this particular topic. Perhaps you could even take a moment to explain why. Alternatively, if you do disagree, perhaps you are a homeopathic practitioner yourself, or maybe you've used one of these so-called remedies in the past and found it beneficial. Whatever your experience and whatever your thoughts, let me know in the comments below, and we can disagree. Very often after I upload a video, the conversation continues for weeks after the initial upload, and that, for me, is what this is all about. Let's have that conversation, let's have that debate, and discover the truth together. Other than that, guys, if you have been enjoying my content, and you enjoyed this video more specifically, don't forget to drop a like on it. And perhaps today is the day that you should become a subscriber. Hit that subscribe button. And while you're at it, don't forget to check the bell notification icon. That way you'll be able to stay up to date with all things on the channel and you'll even be notified as and when my latest videos go live. And for those of you who want to take an extra step and become a deeper, more committed supporter of my work, perhaps today is the day that you should become a patron. Patrons gain access to all sorts of bonuses, perks, and extras. They can have their questions answered in a monthly video. They can have a Skype call with yours truly, Magic Skeptic, and they even gain access to audio only and ad free downloadable versions of my podcast that they can take with them on the go and listen to in their favorite podcasting app while they're at the gym, at work, and what have you. So, guys, that's it for today's video. If you enjoyed my part one expose on homeopathy, you're sure to enjoy part two, which is following up next week. Like I said, if you're watching this video in the future, you can go check out part two right now. Other than that, the second part will be available next week, and I hope you enjoy it. So guys, thank you very much for watching this video, and I hope to see you in the next one. All the best. Bye-bye.